Okay, so I'm doing an oil change in the Escape, and uh, I have tried making this as easy as possible on myself. So I always use a big sheet of cardboard um, under the cars anyway, just to protect the garage. But now even better for oil changes, I can put all my oil change stuff on there, get the oil pan, and then just slide the cardboard under the car until I get it under the oil drain valve. And uh, in my car, instead of using a bolt, I screwed on a little valve that I can just reach under there and flip the switch and it'll start draining. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so here's the little valve right here and I'm just gonna pull it down towards me and rotate it. And now it's starting to drain super, super slow. So now I'm gonna go up under the hood and take off the oil cap. So now I'm gonna take the oil cap off and what that does is that um, allows air to go into the system from the top and drain the oil a little bit quicker. The oil is draining a little bit quicker, but not a whole lot. This is a very tiny valve, so what you save in time, um, not having to fight with a bolt or a wrench, uh, you know, and getting something, uh, lifting the car enough to get your tools under there, um, you lose that time in how long it takes to actually drain the oil. But fortunately, there's never a weekend where I only have one project to do at a time, so now I get to go work on the roof and cover up our evaporative cooler. Okay, now it's obviously done, so I'm just going to clip that over. Now it's sealed just fine. It won't go back. And now it's just the stuff that's uh, in the nozzle itself dripping down. So this cardboard will catch that. So now I'll just move this over under my oil filter here. Now by far the worst part of every oil change I've been a part of is the oil filter. Thankfully, I have lots of clearance here for an oil filter wrench if I need one, but I'm really hoping I don't need one because uh, I only hand tighten these things, so we'll see how this goes. Um, if I cared more about this vehicle and how it smelled, I might put some aluminum foil and wrap it around this because oil will drip on this and this gets hot. So the next time I drive the car, it's going to smell like my engine's burning oil and then I messed something up. So here we go, trying to just use my hand to loosen this and it is not loosening. So I'm going to have to go get a tool. Okay, so now I'm using this tool right here that grips as I turn it. It, it uh, as it turns, these grip down tight. So I'm just gonna put it around the uh, oil filter and uh, just try and loosen it up so I can get the rest off. Oh, look at that. Loosened up super nice. So now I should be able to move this back underneath to catch the oil. You don't want to use your oil filter wrench to take the oil filter off. Now this is just coming off super loose. This is the part where we're going to get messy whether we like it or not. You know what? Since it's already saturating that, I'm going to let it drain a little bit while it's draining into the oil pan. And when it's drained as much as it needs to, then I'll pull the rest of it off so I don't get oil all down my hand. Okay. So now we're just dripping a little, so no matter what, you're going to get an armful of oil. I've not done this without that yet. Um, the only part of the oil change I really, really dislike is this, and I've thought of getting one of those kits where they relocate the oil filter, but once again, it's better to stick with what the manufacturer recommends. There's got to be a reason that they put this in such a frustrating area to where you're going to get soaked with oil, so I'm going to leave it there. It's a pretty long threaded pipe 
that uh, goes into the oil filter, so sometimes it takes longer than you would expect to get out. And then it'll come out as a surprise and sometimes fall on you. I caught it this time and I'm going to put that upside down. That's why I have a uh, oil filter, an oil pan that has um, a little mesh uh, uh, plastic surface so that I can rest things on it and they can drain of oil. And while that's draining and while my hands are super, super messy, we'll get the other oil filter. Now the reason I say while my hands are super, super messy is because I want to get plenty of oil on this little rim right here. And you know what? My fingers are just not messy enough with oil. So we're going to go back over there and get tons of oil on this thing because we want it to uh, form a nice oil tight seal, but we do not want it to weld itself to the block. So we'll go under here where this is still dripping and I'm gonna get plenty of oil on my finger and rub it around that rim where it's nice and shiny maybe hold it you can see that it's nice and shiny from all the oil that's on it now so that'll make it a little bit easier to pull off the next time and uh it is also important to check on your block to make sure there's nothing left over from the last oil filter. And I can see there is not anything left over on mine up there. It's kind of hard to see in this video, but... So now I'm going to pour a little bit of oil in here because I like to prime it. And then I'll screw it on up there. Now I'm using the uh, Motorcraft 5W20 synthetic blend because that is what my engine calls for. In fact, Ford specifically makes the Motorcraft brand. Uh, and this is what they recommend for my vehicle, so that's what I'm going to put in there. I've put in fully synthetic before, and it didn't do too well with my really old engine and old seals and everything. So uh, now I've switched back to this blend. So I just poured a little bit of oil, of uh, new oil, inside here, and it overflowed a little bit, so I put a bunch around the rim, so that'll be good. I made the mistake of having it right here on the cardboard, which is exactly where I'm about to lay down, so I'm going to get some oil on my jacket, but uh, that's why I chose a jacket with a broken zipper. So now what we're going to do is, you guessed it, screw this one in where the other one was. The parts, and it's going to... Pour a little bit of that oil that I just primed it with, but that's fine. I'd rather oil all over this thing, and I just get a little bit screwed on, and just takes a little screw to let it stay on there. And now I can turn it on. The nice thing is by uh, paying attention and letting it, making sure that it can turn this smoothly, I know that I'm not damaging threads and I'm on the right path to getting it on there nicely. Now because it is covered in oil I'm gonna have to wipe it off a little bit. Actually no, I'm getting a really decent grip on this so with these uh, grooves right there I'm getting a good grip. There we go. And There's no need to tighten it beyond hand tight. And this next step is putting the oil in the engine, the new oil, into the car. So, um, and there you can see the metal chain. So I'm going to put this plastic uh, funnel in here. And something really important to never forget is never turn on the engine while you have a funnel in here. Because that metal chain is going to just start chewing through this and throw bits of plastic into your uh, engine. And you will have a very bad day. So, I'm going to grab my oil and start pouring slowly because I don't want to fill it too fast and ideally you would pour this 
the other way around, but that's really hard with one hand. But see there now that it's smooth because the air is able to get into the nozzle up here. Oops. Um, you just really want to make sure not to overfill the funnel because that will start pouring out the bottom of the funnel because you don't have a solid seal between the funnel and the car. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit of my mess. Now I have a five quart jug. I am not going to pour the whole thing in just yet. I'm going to pour most of it in. But remember, my uh, oil drain valve does not drain the entire um, oil pan. So I don't want to have, I don't want to overfill with oil. Once again, that important step of removing the uh, funnel. I'm going to go ahead and replace this. Get it on there the whole way. And we will start up the engine and let the oil work its way through everything. And then we'll kill the engine and check the oil levels. Okay, so we just started the engine and uh, let it run for a while. And then I turned it off and it... Uh, did fine, although it already smells bad um, because of the oil heating up on some of the exhaust manifolds and whatnot. So now I'm going to check the oil. First thing I do is um, pull out the dipstick. And before pulling it all the way out, I'm going to hold it and guide it with this paper towel. And then dry it off because the initial reading is not reliable at all. So you want to make sure and dry it off and not leave any uh, fuzzies from your rag. Oh, this is just as difficult as I thought it would be with a camera. <laughs> so, we'll carefully pull this out. And turn it over to its side. And we'll look at it and we'll see that neither of those little holes are filled. If we turn it over, there's not even any oil. Oh, it really doesn't want to focus on this. There's no oil on the min or max section. So we definitely need to add probably the rest of that five quart thing. So I'm gonna repeat this process. Okay, so we are done with our oil change. It looks to be, uh, Fine now, I got it to where the um, dipstick looked like it was good enough for me, but it didn't quite show up on camera, so you'll have to trust me on that. Um, the next and final step is cleanup, and you can't just pour oil down the drain or uh, toss it in your dumpster. So what I do is I take uh, one of the reasons I use the five quart jugs, since I know I'm going to use at least five quarts, is I um, have this oil pan that has a big lid that will screw on the top of this to cover that up. And then I'll pop that lid off and pour it in through my funnel and bottle that up and take that to uh, wherever I need to. You can pretty much take it to any mechanic shop and they'll take the oil. Um, they'll usually make you sign something to keep track of how much each person's using, but then they'll recycle the oil responsibly.